touching on the top prop bets in NBA today. All right, so touching on some situational bets that we have heading into the night slate for uh, the NBA DFS prize picks contest. One thing that I want to point out is John Morant is currently questionable, okay? And what I have seen is that he's currently projected to start, but I feel like he's truly questionable. And if he were to sit out, that would mean a pick like Laurie Markkinen, whether that be points, rebounds, and assists, actual points, which he's been able to hit the over the last five games, or even fantasy score, which he has really been able to dominate really, um, would be a very strong play. Like if John Moran sits, that means that game is going to be closer. We don't have to worry about that game being a blowout. And that's really the biggest risk with someone like Laurie Markkinen tonight. And also given the fact that he has been on such a tear, eventually he's going to have a bad game as well. Uh, and it kind of seems like everything's coming together for that to happen tonight, unless John Moran sits. And in two games against the Grizzlies, he's had 26 points, 10 rebounds, 3.5 assists, and 3.5 steals or blocks. So that's really the one that I want to get. We just haven't gotten that yet. Okay, if we could get the steals and blocks at like one, I would probably take that. I don't mind the steals here as well, uh, but that's just something that we are waiting on. If we get it, we get it. If not, then you know we'll see. Uh, for now, I'm going to go with the fantasies. Okay, I think that's a great kind of spot to jump on, in on. Okay, and maybe, maybe he does play. It's still not dead in the water. Obviously, Laurie has been going off this is still a very low number for him points wise. 35 is very cheap. And then also I do want to point this out as well. Anthony Edwards currently questionable. Uh, initial reports were that he wasn't going to play today. Okay. He is currently projected to start though as well. So we'll have to see. It does seem like prize picks has adjusted the numbers a little bit. Okay. Rudy Gobert 15.5 points is actually over his average with both cat and Carl, or with both Cat and Anthony Edwards off the court. He actually averaged only 13.3 fantasy points per 36 with those two off the court. But two things. Coming off of really his best game of the season, I think he has a good chance to you know really have another good game once again today. And two, it's a good matchup going against Houston. So that's also a beneficial thing for him as well. He should be able to go out and get some rebounds and some points. The question is, what do you want to bet with him? Do you want to do rebounds? You could do rebounds. Do you want to do rebounds, points, and assists? I actually would like this one for him today. I think think it makes a lot of sense because he should be the one that's kind of doing really well. I will say if we get news that Anthony Edwards is out getting D'Angelo Russell over 19.5 points, I think would be huge. This would be a nice spot for him. So looking at it with those two off the court, he does only average 20 fantasy points per 36 with those two off the court. I like the fact that it is above that number. Obviously, this is stuff that is supposed to be close, and this is close. But given the fact that it is going to be a good game against Houston, like a higher scoring game, and the spread is pretty close, like I think this is a great chance for someone like D'Angelo Russell to really go off and have a good game. And we can see, you know, th or three out of his last five games, he's been able to get over that number. And I think, like, probability wise, he has a really good chance to get over that number. Uh, this is a potentially a game in which you could stack as well. But I'm going to show you guys something that um, doesn't really correlate well. It could. But I don't know if I like it as much. So I'll show you guys that real quick. So I do like Sen Gun to go over this number, 24.5 rebounds and assists. My biggest worry is honestly the matchup with Rudy Gobert. Like I said, it was his best matchup of the season. So this is one in which you could potentially kind of get unique. Like this is a spot in which we could stack. Maybe you bet an under for Sen Gun, just given the matchup with Rudy Gobert. And in that sense, I would say don't do this. I would say maybe fantasy score, you would bet the under then, just assuming that that Rudy Gobert kind of shuts him down. And I also want to toss out like Kyle Anderson would be a lock if we get news that Naz Reed, who is currently questionable, were to sit. He left the game, their previous game. He left the game in the second half. And if he were to sit, Kyle Anderson at 10 and a half points would be highly intriguing. He's actually the one, if you just look at it with Cat and Ant-Man off, he's actually the one that benefits the most points-wise, spread-wise, based on how price picks is valuing them. He actually averages 14 points per 36. And if Naz Reed is out, then that number, that minutes number of 36 minutes is highly likely. So I would say there is a buying opportunity here for Kyle Anderson. Really, it's going to be up to you guys to decide which one you want to go with. He could get rebounds, he could get points. Heck, you could do points, rebounds, and assists. I actually feel like this is a very low number for him as well uh, because he is someone that can contribute extremely well, even if he's not shooting the basketball well. Like if he's not shooting the basketball well, he could get seven assists, seven rebounds. Like that's him. And maybe he does pay off with seven points as well. Um, so it's really for you guys to decide what you want to do there. I think this is a great chance for Kyle Anderson. He's going to be one of my favorite bets on tonight's slate. So Jalen Williams again tonight, I think he's in a great spot. And this really is predicated on the fact that I'm assuming Alexei is already out. We know that small forward for the Golden State or for the Oklahoma City Thunder. Apologies. And then also assuming that the other Jalen Williams with a Y is going to be out. He's currently questionable. 
okay? If he's out, that does help out Jalen Williams, the small forward power forward, okay? We saw him last game in that same situation, had 18 real life points, three rebounds, or three assists, eight rebounds. And he has been someone that lately has been going off as well. We can see he's been able to get over this number uh, four out of the last five games, okay? And so tack on the fact that they'd be without three of their bigs, that should ensure that those minutes are going to be there. And this game with Dallas is actually a sneaky game in which you can stack as well. Uh, I like the over here for Jalen Williams. You could also go with like Dort as well. Dort is someone that's going to benefit if those three are out as well. Not as much of a lock and load, but he also is someone that um, more times than not is going to get that over as well. Uh, so given the game, given that nature of that game, I like that as well. So now this is going to be one in which the data really likes it. And it's really deciding which one you want to go with. Either the points, rebounds, and assists for DeJounte Murray. He's one of the highest players that are projected to finish over their prop on tonight's slate. And it's like one of the ones I agree with. And also the fantasy points. I kind of like the fantasy points a little bit more going against the Clippers. It should be a better matchup now. I will say Paul George and Kawhi are both active. Then he's. I feel like he's not as good of a play. Uh, but at the same time, it shouldn't really change much. This does seem like a low number for him. And it's a number that I do like. And so you guys remember the nail biter from two nights ago where we had Jalen Williams and John Collins. I actually kind of like going back to that again tonight. Clint Capella is still expected to be out. And John Collins' number did not change at all. And yes, he barely got over it okay that is the worry there but at the same time we know he has a good chance to get over it because with Clint Capella out he averages over that for this points rebounds and assists and really with him it's been the concern has been minutes and he's been able to get those minutes recently so that's huge with Clint Capella out we can project him to get around 30 minutes so that is something that I do like and that's a play that more times than not is going to hit it's a play that more times than not is going to be the correct play now you can go fantasy score as well we can see he was definitely over that a little bit more last game and that's that's one that I don't mind as well so if you guys want to go fantasy score instead of points rebounds and assists it's not a bad route to go uh actually on tonight's side, I think that might be the better route to go. So maybe we plug that in instead. So they haven't figured out where they want to put the fantasy points for Christian Wood just yet, which is kind of interesting to me. It could be at 40. I would say if it's below 40, that's going to be a spot in which we should attack it. Now, I think the points personally are going to be the one that I want to attack the most. He's projected at 22 and a half. Okay, that's what they got him at. But with Luke off the court, averages 26 per 36. Okay, just looking at his game log, we can see he's been able to get close to that number without getting those minutes. And now with Luca off the court, we expect those minutes to be there. We expect that usage to be there. Okay. I guess the concern for people would be that the last time out against OKC did not get there, but that was a game in which Luca really just went off and dominated. So that's part of the equation as well. Lately, Wood has been getting more minutes. And if we can get 35 or so, like, yes, he's going to smash that. And that's uh, that's the biggest risk, obviously, is just banking on those minutes being there. But we have seen time and time again, when Luca's off the court, it's him getting the minutes. It's actually Spencer Din Dinwiddie has the most minutes with um, Luca off the court. And then it's Christian Wood. But Spencer Dinwiddie for prize picks. And I, I'm going to do projected points there. So Dinwiddie is not bad. But at the same time, far from like being a great one, he should be able to get there in theory. He averages 20 points per 36 with Luka off the court, so it's going to be close. But obviously, he does get a good matchup against OKC. That should help uh, him score a little bit more. You know, I'd say they're both better actual like DraftKings FanDuel plays than they are um, prize picks plays because I feel like there's a little bit of risk there. And then I do want to touch on just two other situations. So two players that could end up being locks depending on how or if prize picks gives us some props for them is Washington Jr. And I just feel like they're not going to be able to project him up high enough. His per 36 fantasy score-wise with um just booker and pain off the court is 44 and so tag on the fact that cp3 is most likely going to sit as well that's their top you know guards that are going to be out i just don't see how they're going to accurately be able to project his like fantasy points and actual real life points at a number that makes sense you know honestly like if they throw out a number that's like 20 real life points like i don't know i I'd probably still go with the over there just hoping that obviously he would get like 28 to 36 minutes and if he does he should be able to smash that and that's the biggest question is uh where they're going to price him at if they do price him but if we see a good number out there guys please jump on it, it should be a lock in theory and i mean that's obviously the biggest issue with uh doing videos at this time and then i want to point out jalen noel he would actually be the one that benefits the most with both uh ant-man and with cat out okay and he actually averages more points per 36 with Russell off the court. And the biggest question is, would he get those minutes? We don't know. But at the same time, I also feel like once the number comes out, they will not be able to properly project it. So those are two that we should just be watching out for. So in theory, this would be kind of the best that I put out there today. I haven't exactly decided just yet. We have a couple of hours before lock, but I'd be betting the over on these. I feel like really strong ones would still be 
John Collins, but if I had to pick two, which is what I like to do, and I didn't hit last night, so I'm probably going to double down um, and hope that I hit again. If I don't hit tomorrow, I'm going to double down again. That's kind of just my approach. Ah, what, you guys decide for me. Okay, what are we doing? Are we doing Kyle Anderson and hoping that Naz Reed sits, or are we just going to kind of play it safe with uh, Jalen Williams and hope that the other Jalen Williams sits? I feel like Christian Wood is the one we want to go with. Mm, that is tough. Maybe we just do three separate bets where we're mixing and matching it in there. You know, toss one in there with Jalen Williams instead of Christian Wood. I'll probably do that. Okay, I'll probably mix and match it. And if they all hit great, if two out of the three hit great, if one of the three hit, I'm also fine with that because then we're splitting even. That might be the approach instead. But I do just kind of want to double down and hit this. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out before lock. But hopefully that was giving you guys some solid information and hopefully you guys can cash tonight. Let's have a good prize pick slate and good luck tonight. As always, let's keep cashing. Thanks.